And I love that, you know, all the girls are training, but I just don't agree too much that you have to divide that, you know. So I feel like there's still like mentality that are kind of pushing all the girls back and um, like a barrier that we put ourselves and then like think, I know it's because I can't trade with a guy, let's say. I can't, I can't be around the guys because they are stronger than me. But no, and especially in martial arts, you prove a lot of, of, of in fights, you prove that technique is more than strength. Hi, this is Desi Flores, and I'm here with Sabina, the Colombian queen, Mazo, who is fighting on the UFC Las Vegas January 18th fight card, Conor McGregor versus Cowboy Cerrone. She is less than two weeks out right now, so... I really appreciate you meeting with me today. I know that you have to be going through a lot physically and mentally right now. How are you feeling? And what's today look like for you in fight camp? Uh, thank you for inviting me. You know, I think uh, it's great to share kind of the word, especially before fights. Um, and I'm feeling happy. You know, I'm busy, of course, training. Uh, like you said, you you were busy mentally and physically. But I feel amazing. You know, I feel I feel great. I feel like all this month's been amazing work and uh, finally getting together. Finally, the time is coming. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy about everything and about the fight. Nice. So, I remember when you were at LFA that they scheduled your fights around your school finals. Are you still in school while you're fighting for the UFC? Uh, so, this year, well, last year, I, I took off, like, some time. You know, I wanted to focus on fighting kind of recovering a little bit more, you know, because I could do it and it was kind of easy, but um, I didn't realize that it was taking a lot of my time to recover. So um, I wanted to take that time, but I'm going to start this year again. Like So after my fight, I'm going to start like the weekend after I, I start to study. Oh, well, so you go back to school a week after this fight card. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Okay. So when you left... Columbia. You were, were at 19? I was 19 years old. Okay, so you were 19 and... Actually, you, 18. 18. Now. You were 18 and you which yeah. because your first pro fight was the day after your 18th birthday. Yeah. And you went right to it. And I was you, you fought two fights, two pro fights, you won, and you left the country. You up and left <laughs> an entire country, family, friends, everybody. That's incredible. What... Were there, I mean, I would imagine there were people that were kind of hating against you or telling you that you couldn't accomplish this or you shouldn't do it. Were there people like that in your family or friends? And what do they say now that you're on a fight card like this in Vegas? Well, you know, I feel like uh, my family, they always believe on me. And that's a blessing I had because they always, they went to my first fight and they still come to the fight in UFC. So they always believed on me. But um, I had a lot of friends or people that, you know, were in my, in my environment that they still nowadays don't believe, you know. Now, the, because I'm in the UFC, they are like, oh, okay, maybe. But they still doubt, you know. And I don't see that as bad. I just see that as a motivation too, you know, because it's not, I don't fight to prove those people. I just fight to prove myself and, and try to, you know, accomplish all my goals. And then they can see the results. So, yeah, I mean, it was something that people... Until now, they believe or, or they started to believe, but they always have those people, so you just have to deal with them. Exactly. Now, you've also mentioned that it's really important for you to show that women in Colombia can be more than just beautiful and to represent Spanish-speaking Latin Americans in general because we don't have a lot of people in the UFC that are from the Spanish-speaking countries in Latin America and to just also so show women in general. So sometimes when you have these people like that that don't believe in it, you can show everybody that something's possible. And I think it's incredible because coming from another country like that into the United States, it's hard to make it in anything. So to come here and move this quickly along your career path is absolutely incredible. And you are already becoming a role model in that. I know that you have a famous rapper, was it Jay Balvin, and that shouted you out on your UFC debut and things like that. So you're already, your name is out there. How does that feel for you? Well, you know, for me, it's kind of a blessing too because it's the opportunity to have a voice in, in the world, you know. I don't, I don't believe too much in fame. I just believe that like, you have to appreciate those moments that the world has the eyes on you and kind of spread a message, any message you want, you know. People... Sometimes just want to, you know, talk about themselves. But 
um <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like those kind of moments, I want to show my work, do my best, but to show the others that they can do it as well. And it's not about maybe as a woman or as a man, it's just that any human can go there and, and, and achieve their goals, you know. But of course, a woman in this area, we are kind of changing perspectives. So I am I'm kind of trying to show that they can do it as well. And uh, it's not about the gender, it's about what you have inside and the the thoughts that you are like the, the human being you are more than the gen now have you encountered anything that you would say has been an extra challenge in mixed martial arts because you're a female uh you know i feel i don't know why when i when i first started training a lot of the girls tried to join with other girls you know like there was this idea that they have to isolate and kind of train with only with the girls. So this pressure, I felt it even from us, you know, like it was not the pressure from the guys. Like I know the girls can train over here. No, the guys always open the doors for me and everything. But I felt this pressure, like all the girls invited me to train. Like I know we have this group of girls and I love that, you know, all the girls are training, but I just don't agree too much that you have to divide that, you know. So I feel like there's still like mentality that are kind of pushing all the girls back and um, like a barrier that we put ourselves and then like think, I know it's because I can't trade with a guy. Let's say I can't, I can't be around the guys because they are stronger than me. But no, and especially in martial arts, you prove a lot of, of, of in fights, you prove that technique is more than strength. So that's not the point, you know. I really like that perspective that it's a mental challenge that, a female has to get over in her own head to know that she can train with anybody and she doesn't have to segregate her own self. That's a very yeah, interesting I, perspective. I, I train every day with, with the guys, you know, they're all the weights for me. It's not, that's not the issue. And I feel like every time I step in the, in the gym, um, it's not the Sabina Maso women that, you know, have other thoughts outside the gym. No, I'm over there and I try to be a martial artist, you know, and I feel like that's a mentality that, I mean, not everyone should have, you know, because I have no one to tell them what to do. But to to realize that everyone is in the same level, you know, everyone goes there to learn. That's awesome. So in your upcoming fight, if you were to look at it in a paper, you say that she has a lot more octagon time than you. So she has a lot more experience than you. But when you look at your history, you started against an opponent. Your very first pro fight was against an opponent that was 4-0. Your second fight was against a female that was 8-0. When you think about that, a female that's 8-0 has a lot of eyes on her. So you went in there in your second fight as a pro and took that win. So you're used to, and then when you went to your LFA debut, you had, you know, you have head kick that went viral. So you're used to challenging yourself. Right now in the UFC, they're putting you against these opponents. But when you have your first or second fight, you chose to go against opponents that were way tougher than you. Do you think that prepared you for this point in your UFC career when you're going against someone like J.J. Aldrich? For sure, for sure. Each each one of the fights I had before has helped me to be the fighter I am right now. And I feel that's going to show the work against any opponent. It could be J.J. Aldrich or it could be anyone else. I feel the experience I have, uh, others don't have as well. Her history is different, you know. But uh, what makes a difference, I feel, is the fights I had and, of course, the training I, I, I do. Awesome. No, I started following your journey when I saw you at LFA, and I know that they really, you had a lot, in, before LFA, I believe you were on ESPN, right, after you had two fights. In LFA, you had videos that were viral, and now you're in the UFC, and you have a huge potential for exposure on this fight card, and you're going against an opponent that wins the majority of the time by decision. Being that you've had some incredible finishes in the past and being that you probably want to finish this opponent, being that she goes to decision often, do you feel an extra pressure to try to get a very dominant finish on this fight? No, you know, I feel it's a great opportunity because it shows me that she's tough. You know, it shows me that, ah, okay, I go all the way to the end. So it gives me, like, this desire to, to want to finish, but I don't feel pressure because at the same time I... I feel confident with my game. I don't feel comfortable. Like, ah, she's not that good. She's a great fighter. And that's why she has her, her victories, you know. But I feel like that that I can use in my advantage, you know. I can use that if she goes all the way to kind of uh, get her in my, 
in my game and kind of get her her lost and finish the fight in any moment. So based off what what do you know about your opponent and how do you plan to get your win? You know, I think she's tough, great fighter. She has good victories, good striking as well. Um, like her last fight, she finished her, um, I don't remember the name of the other girl, but uh, good fight. And uh, tough, you know, she's one of the fighters that I, I think like in UFC, everyone that is in there is good, you know. It's the top level, so for sure she she's there. And she's one more that is in my way, you know. And it could be any style. I feel like she's great striking and that can give a show to the people because I, I love, I love striking. So um, that's basically, she's tough, good striking, and um, it's not going to, it's not going to make her, she's not going to like quit in the first round. So that's for me, uh, the fight I won. Now, one of the most interesting things about you to me is your level of obsession with the sport which you basically need to have to become legendary in anything. And I watched a video of you where you said, I love MMA more than my family, more than my friends, and even more than myself sometimes. And that really struck me and shows a level, and you know, and being the fact that you moved here and sacrificed all that. What was it about MMA? Because you were an athlete before that in other sports. So you already had competed before, and that's not what it is. There's something special about MMA that made you fall in love with it. What do you think it is? that made that click in that way for you to where you're you're dedicating your life to this right now? Yeah, you know, I think it's so complex. It's the sport that uh, I feel like I've been trying to learn about it for many years and I still don't know anything. So it's just this wanting to learn and learn and learn. And I'm a, a person that loves to train, you know. I like to step in the gym. Uh, I don't do fight camps. I'm all the time training because of that, you know. I feel like I am ready for any opponent. Like I told you, it doesn't matter if they change the name there. You know, of course, you do some adjustments. You have to kind of understand who's your opponent. But uh, my my goal is to put my game into them. You know, not not play around their game because I I made that mistake in the past, and uh, like the, the the fight I lost, I kind of let the other opponent uh, kind of play with me and play around. You know. So uh, for me, it's basically that, you know, MMA for me is so challenging. MMA for me is like every, every time is a new thing. And uh, it's just that desire that I feel to, to learn and to be better. Well, as you bring up that loss, which was your UFC debut, your only pro loss, you really learn a lot about a fighter when they've had a loss, I feel like. There's some that come back and they're never the same. Some just kind of breeze right through it and others seem to learn from it. And you said before your fight against Dobson that you felt that you learned more than you lost in that fight. Oh, and for sure. I thought that was absolutely amazing. You came back with a dominant decision win. So did that teach you anything about yourself as an athlete? It changed, it changed my life. No one wants to lose, and this is going to sound really bad, but I think I, did, I needed to lose in that fight. I needed to pass through that because it changed completely the way I, I was seeing fight. Um, I was... It changed the way I trained, the way I was looking, the, the you know, the day by day. It kind of gave me a lot of focus. And um, and to be honest, I was, of course, I was kind of, ah, I lost, you know, sad about it. But not really. I was happy. Like, like I spoke with my team, like, hey, I have so many things to improve, you know. Like, uh, I, I, I think I can win this fight. Like, it, it didn't happen. Like, oh, she dominated me and I... I was scared in the after no in any moment, you know. She's a great fighter. She won. Amazing. But I feel I can do way better and I can, you know, win this fight in many others. So I I appreciate that. Uh she wasn't there and she did that because if it wouldn't for that I think I'll be uh, a completely fighter right now. That's amazing. Now what would you say to women that are listening in right now that may be deciding to get into MMA? or young girls, I should say, deciding to get into MMA, what would you tell them? Uh, completely do it. Uh, you can be. You have to be a little crazy to, <laughs> you know, have a passion for punches because it's not only punching, kicking people. You're gonna, you're gonna get some as well. Uh, but yeah, you know, have the discipline. Don't, don't have um, this concept in your mind that only guys can do it. Uh, just step in the mat and try to work work your own, do your best. And it, and maybe you're not going to do MMA your entire life. You're going to learn a little bit of the, of the martial arts um, discipline and stuff and apply it to your life. So everyone really, girls, 
boys, little kids, everyone I recommend to do martial arts. Okay, one last question. Uh, just because you brought up maybe you're not going to do it for your whole life and you're going to go back to school next year, what are you going to school for? Is it something that ties into this that can lead, that the two can combine later on in life? So uh, it was, it was nutrition. So I, I was studying nutrition and I thought, okay, no, sport and nutrition, I love it. That's perfect. Let's do it. But I didn't like it. And I, I changed to biology. So it's something completely different. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how it's going to mix those two, but I, that's what I like. You know, I always, actually, if I was not going to fight I before coming here to, to the U.S., I was like, oh, okay, I have to make the decision or I start fighting, like I move to the United States or I stay here and I study medicine. So um, I, I took, of course, the, the, the good way and uh, went fighting or the hard way, and um, and biology, yeah, so let's see what comes in the future. For now, my career and my focus is MMA. That is a very difficult major, so you are a very well-rounded human being. Uh, well, thank you so much, Sabina. I really appreciate you taking the time today, and I wish you the best of luck. Uh, like I said, I followed your career for a while, and I am excited to see you in the cage January 18th against J.J. Aldridge, Conor McGregor versus Cowboy Cerrone fight card in Las Vegas, Nevada. Thank you.